Chibi Judo in three words. Hard ass. I do have a uh, fun winding him up about how he needs a massage every four hours and you know he's probably got a bread maker in the van and he has just proved me wrong hasn't he? He's just smashed out of the park. If I could capture in a sentence like the way I felt about it on the finish is I left it all out there. I couldn't have gone back and ridden harder at any stage. I left it all out there. And I think if you can get to the end of any race and say that, whether you come in first, middle or last, that's awesome. You know, that's, that's your personal best. That's you building a sense of, of worth. So coming into the event, my goal was to, was to win. And um, about halfway through that, that shifted to try and chase the records. I knew it would all get done had to get on and do it and then try and enjoy it as much as possible. What they've done is they've created this racing culture which goes back to the Tour de France back in 1903 when it started, you know, where you have much, much bigger stages, much longer stages than any Grand Tour would have now. And then after each stage, there's a regroup, people come in and then there's a mass start again. I think the joy and the memories and the, the strength of emotions associated with GB Duro just come through the, the intensity of it. It's not a passive experience, it's something that you've got to earn. <laughs> Land's End to John O'Groats on gravel, you've got some single track in there, you've got some fast flowing tracks, you've got a lot of roads. It sort of tests the rider to, you know, you need to be a versatile rider. It's those wild extremes of going from mountain bike trails in Wales to, to an urban nighttime adventure which, which makes it so intense. The route really showcases the variety that Britain has to offer. It encapsulates like British sort of quote unquote gravel. And, and you could say, well, some of those sections feel like a bit of a commute to get between the interesting places, but, but it's that variety which makes it interesting. And I think as a bike rider, is, is hugely testing. You know, if you were just a hardcore mountain biker, you might struggle on the road. If you're like myself and you spent your life riding road, the bits that really tested me are the Yorkshire Dales, the, you know, the Pennine Bridleway and sections through the Highlands of Scotland, which I mean, I was definitely a better bike rider coming off the back of GB Duro. I learned so much in 11 hard days racing. Uh, so it just shows you, you know, you never, you never stop learning. It's funny isn't it, it's like the ultimate FOMO watching that dots go around. Um, I, I couldn't make the race this year but I've got a lot of friends doing it and I'm at home and I'm looking at the dots and I'm like right get off the computer, stop stop doing this, like get on with your work and then I find myself like back looking at the dots again and be like oh they're doing good. <laughs> I saw some dot watchers at two o'clock in the morning on the Pennine Bridleway in the middle of the rain, just cheering me on. I was like, that's, like, that's really what gets me going. Like people coming out there and like giving it my best. And the support on the course has been like amazing.
love what Chibi Chiro are doing to push this event for women. Like, you know, it's, it's very much they're shouting about women, they're asking for women to take part in it. Their aim is for it to be a 50 50 split. I mean, most bike packing races, you've got like it's a tiny percentage of women, you know, under 10% are normally women that are doing these on the start line. So the fact for GB Judo to have such a massive um, percentage, it's like 40%, I think, that, um, that were female this year you look at the top 10 it's nearly split isn't it i think there's like four women sitting in the top 10 right now it's great it's it's incredible and i think the more events like these that are shouting about women doing this stuff then the more women see it and then the more women imagine it for themselves so i think it's all visual representation you know whoever's out there doing these things shouting about it making it accessible then that's what's going to bring more women into the sport so i think um, yeah gb judo are doing a good job of that As long as you make the cutoff times, then you're then you're getting to catch up with everyone in the field. You get to share stories, and there's this wonderful ebb and flow where there's this intensity of racing, and then there's the moment where you can, you know, recover, you know, reflect. Well, I had a bit of a dip in the middle when I was feeling a bit ill. And I was wondering if I'd be able to set off on stage three. Stage one and stage two are so much harder. And if you stick at it, stage three and four are the rewards for getting through stage one and two. At times it's a very lonely event. Like it's you're testing yourself and, and there's a lot of you know getting to know yourself uh, but the other aspect is of course there is a community as well so you're doing it with like-minded people which gives you kind of a buzz because it's not everyone wants to do this sort of thing When I walked off the Corrie Arach, I'd already been going 30 hours, so it ended up being a 33 hour stage to, to get to the finish. So I wasn't that reflective in terms of like, I just thought let's get, get to the finish of the stage. I'd been going from eight o'clock the previous morning, it was now three o'clock the following afternoon, and I'd not stopped. So I just thought, whatever happens in Fort Augustus, just get there and then I'll figure it out. It wasn't great, I really hurt my feet, I was super tired, but you know, I could see the finish. Okay, it was a long way away and I had a long way downhill in the rain to get there, but it could have been worse. So a little bit of perspective, I think, helped me because I thought when I get to the bottom of this massive climb, 10 miles down a hill, it's done. I'm, I'm over. That's the end of stage three. Whereas if I'd been stuck out in the middle of the stage, like Angus was, um, my options would have been a lot worse. I'm really good for Angus. I oh, know. Because, no. like. He's pushing so hard. Yeah, he was pushing so, so hard. So much effort. And he was doing so well. Yeah. And he was so focused on trying to beat um, Rockland. Yeah, he's been disqualified. Oh, poor him. That's. Uh, oh, I'm gutted for him. So. The news that Angus had been disqualified and the consequences of that didn't compute the way I'm guessing people might think um, because you've got to put it in the, in the context of me having run out of food and being a bit delirious. Angus! Well, it's nice to find out I've been to your future on Instagram post. 
About two hours before I arrived, I uh, found out that I'd been disqualified for accepting outside assistance. So I had a good two hours of riding to process everything. Obviously a lot of different emotions go through your head whilst you're going through all of that. At first I was, I was fuming really to be honest, I was really angry and obviously it's quite easy to sort of start, start blaming like the organisers and thinking like well why would they do that, you know I've put so much work into it and everything. Um, but in reality like looking at the rules it is really clear like what I did was outside assistance and I can't argue with that. I arrived having heard from the media crew much further down the race that Angus had had a problem but I didn't know what the consequences from that was. So I rode the entirety of the last night knowing that there would be a story. So when I finished I was not in a great place. Uh, the last 300 kilometers there was no supply points for food and I ran out of food. When you're a bit dizzy, when you're just, you know, most finishing line pictures are somebody like holding the bike up and celebrating. My finishing line, line uh, picture is me lying on the ground and that wasn't for show, I was, I was just cooked. <laughs> Setting out, I didn't know whether I'd be top 10% or middle of the pack. I genuinely didn't know. I, I, I thought, well, I'll just put my best effort in. When I came in second on stage one, at that point, that sort of set my expectation in terms of, okay, you know, I'm probably not going to race as fast as Angus, but I can, I can definitely stay top three here. I wonder what Angus's motivation would have been if he'd found himself in second, because I think Angus's mindset on the start line was, I'm in this to win at all costs. Whereas I went into it with no expectation as to, you know, I thought I would be at the front of the field, but I certainly didn't sort of expect to win it. So my motivation didn't change at all because I wasn't actually trying to beat anyone. I was just trying to experience and enjoy and push myself hard in my maiden race. So for, for Jamie and Ollie and Philippa, it was pretty hard unless I had a major mechanical or major injury for them to make back the time. Something would have had to have happened to my race as opposed to just them riding well. And that's the way I felt all the way through the race from checkpoint one. I felt like I was riding, riding for second. It's difficult because we don't really want the event to, to grow too much because it's nice keeping it small and it's like a tight community. Um, and obviously if we grow it more, it has more of an impact on the trails, on the environment um, and that's not really what we're about. I like five star luxury, but I also love waking up in a field in Wales, pouring down, knowing that you've got nearly 500 kilometres to race to the next checkpoint and it's up to you and your, your gumption and your resilience to get there. The ethos is leave no trace, no fly rule. The amount of emissions that come from aviation is unacceptably high and of course I can't control the myriad of factors that are going to impact future sustainability but I can, uh, I can control how people get to, to GB Duro and I hope that other events acknowledge that you know we're in a crisis and that, that we all need to be starting to do that. Uh, we describe it as a scrappy rolling picnic. Scrappy is, you don't know what's coming, it's all just messy, rolling because, well, you're desperate for some like smooth, easy miles um, and it 
you know, you're just going through different landscapes and that's pretty cool. And picnic because yeah, eating is like as big a part of this thing as the riding. As my first race, as my maiden race, I loved it. And yet there was times during the race that, you know, I was really, really suffering and struggling. My friend Alberto gave me a little bunch of these, which is grappa from his town in Treviso. He's Italian. So this one's for Alberto. He's not dead or anything, he's just in he's just in Italy. Isn't he? Woo! I think it's dangerous with hindsight even being a matter of weeks ago it's already something I want to do again there are miles that you earn I've just got so much respect for anyone who completes that course because you know I'm pulling on a lifetime of expedition experience and I I, I felt it was a 10 out of 10 in terms of <laughs> grittiness and challenge task it really is in my mind the hardest event you can do in a gravel bike uh, in the UK. It end, ended with a bang, so that's all I can remember now. I'm really, really pleased with how, how I rode. The thing I was proud of in terms of my race is turning up, maiden race, riding consistently and leaving it all out there. And the way the cookie crumbled, that was enough to win. You can't describe it in three words. You simply can't. You get a chance to ride it, it's once in a lifetime experience. Um, unless you enter it again. Um, yeah, a massive, massive challenge and a massive achievement once you finish. It tastes better when you've carried it for... Well, I bet it's pretty cold as well, this has been like minus five. It was a horrible last gravel bit, but there was like, it was amazing sunrise and, um, and like a moon, full moon all night. It was amazing. I was, I was literally all nighter. Yeah, Let's go back again, race back down the yeah, other way yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the land's end. Good to meet. Welcome. You guys smashed it. You guys have four hours. How was the midnight? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it more if I beat Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't. <laughs>